Liverpool are a strange team. Now, this season, they've made a habit of absolutely destroying teams just the, the like just after looking completely average in the previous game at points. The, the, I think this is the fourth time now this season Liverpool have scored six or more goals in a game, which I, I'm not even sure that happened last season. I don't think that happened at all last season. This season, Liverpool have scored nine against Bournemouth, seven, for, seven against Rangers, seven against Man United, and now six against Leeds. It's uh, quite bizarre, to be honest. Uh, but Leeds tonight were just terrible defensively. Um, you, you can sort of tell they're not, not horrendous in attack, but the midfield and the defence is just so poor. The defensive line for some of the goals is just non-existent, it, it, like to the point of they may as well not have like a defender there for some of them. It, it's... Um, it must be really frustrating to watch for Leeds fans because it, it, they just cannot hold a defensive line at all. The, the centre backs, uh, it, it, well, tonight it, it was cock and stroke. That they, they just f far too easy to uh, distract by getting getting going for the ball. If that makes sense, like they they have no discipline and knowledge of when to hold and went when to go for the ball and a lot of the time they just get caught in two minds and that, that that's the worst thing you can do in some situations you've got to either commit or hold and and leads just don't know what to do and and it's also like they, they don't work as a unit defensively there's just um no no communication it seems and also no telepathy if that if that makes sense i haven't even pronounced that correctly but that they, they have no idea of what each other is going to do next if that makes sense it just uh reeks of a team that haven't really looked into what sort of shape they want to get into when they are being attacked in certain scenarios so yeah it's, it's not a good look at all especially after the 5-1 defeat last week to Crystal Palace. So that's, what, 11 goals conceded in the last two home games. That That's really not good going. And Leeds had done quite well to uh, pull themselves out of the relegation zone. Now, by no means are they clear of, uh, you know, the risk of relegation. They've still got to get some points on the boards. So they're, they're, in fact, they're, they're right back in it with the last two results. But... It, it, it was looking better for them two weeks ago, but now now they, you know, that they're, they're in a bit of trouble again. That they need to find some points from somewhere, and I, I, there is obviously a couple of players they're clearly missing in this team. I think there's been a big improvement since Verber came into the team in January. Tyler Adams has been, you know, a, a big difference in when he's been playing in midfield uh, this season for them. So they they could really do with him back. Rodrigo having in, him in the team was a positive for tonight, but you could sort of tell that he, he wasn't one hundred percent. I I didn't think anyway. Um, but yeah, they, they they've got to find a way of getting these points because right now that there, there is definitely, you know, not Nottingham Forest and Southampton look like the two teams who are most likely to go down right now. But that final relegation spot is you know that there's four or five teams who could easily get it and there's nothing to stop Nottingham Forest and Southampton from you know pulling themselves out of the mess they're in so yeah Le Leeds need to uh, act and act quick but uh, yeah for Liverpool it it's just one of them really it's um it's, it's a result that's a brilliant result but uh, at the end of the season where it's been too inconsistent and it's a bit too late to really make a charge for anything. Um, it, 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 like you, you look at teams in, in, who are in a similar position to Liverpool, uh, say, say for instance, uh, Brighton, I think, well, Brighton, Brighton are higher up in the table than Liverpool now, but 
say if Brighton were fighting for a Europa League spot, which I mean that that's the minimum they're going to get the way they're playing at the moment. They they who knows even even could push for a Champions League spot. But the teams like Brighton, Brentford, Aston Villa, Europa League feels like an achievement for them. And if they were you know eighth with. Uh, one game to go on the final day of the season, they'd be desperate for that European spot. With Liverpool, it doesn't really have the same feel to it because Liverpool's expectations this season were to make sure they get top four at the very minimum. They like the Liverpool this season were hoping to, you know, take the title off Manchester City and, and bring it back to Anfield, but that obviously hasn't happened. Um so yeah, it it doesn't really. It feels like it's top four or nothing for Liverpool. It, it so yeah, it's it's just you know a, a really tough season for Liverpool. But it, there are positives to the last game and a half, I would say, including the second half against Arsenal, because I I think this position change for Trent Alexander Arnold and and the change of the team's shape as a whole to. Uh, a similar shape to what Manchester City are currently playing under Guardiola. Uh, Alexander Arnold, sort of like the John Stones in, in, in this team, except for him. I think Alexander Arnold has uh, a slightly different role to Stones. Stones is more uh, keeping hold of possession and holding a position down well, whereas Alexander Arnold, it's more of like a, a quarterback role where he's got to, um, you know, find attacking players with uh, like I, I don't want to say hollywood passes but killer passes if that if that makes sense like passes that are going to you know open up a team and create a chance that that that's what his game's more about whereas Fabinho I think is going to be more focused on you know the uh, breaking up of opponents attacks things like that so it's slightly different to how Manchester City are currently using this uh, shape within the roles that, that, that they are playing with. Um, and Curtis Jones and Jordan Henderson, having them in front of Fabinho and Alexander Arnold, that seemed to work quite well. Um, it, Curtis Jones definitely had tonight his best performance of the season, I thought. Um, he hasn't had many uh, full 90 minutes this season, but in this game, it was definitely his best one because uh, it, it's been a bit of a... I, I don't want to say a horrendous season for Jones, really, but it's, it's been an, it's not been a good season for him up up until this point, uh, just, just because he hasn't been in the team consistently at any point and he is a player who I, th I think does need a run of games to get to his best I think so it's yeah it's, it's been difficult for him but it, it was a good performance tonight that there, there were a good uh, a few good performances for Liverpool I, I thought Salah had a really good game took his two goals really well Gakpo played really well even Jota I even though Jota I think doesn't look very sharp at the minute he took his two goals really well and did really well to set up uh, Salah's first goal so yeah, the, the the front three, I, I didn't think it would work tonight because I, I'm not a massive fan of Gakpo and Jota as a, a pair on the left and the centre of the attack. But they, they played well together tonight. I, I think you can put that down slightly to how poor Leeds were defensively and, and how sort of... A, invisible they were in midfield I would say just Western McKenney doesn't have much of a presence in there and Mark Rocker I, I just think it is too rash and not not very well disciplined I don't think in, in terms of keeping his head in, in certain situations so yeah uh, th th there were a few other talking points in the game Luis Diaz came off the bench for the uh, Final 10 minutes, his first game in six months. So it's obviously amazing to have him back. It's definitely going to help Liverpool as, as a team. And he, he, he looked quite good when he came on, to be fair. And I, I know once again, you have to take it into account that he has come on against a quite a poor Leeds team. 
but yeah, it, it, it's it's a good night for Liverpool, definitely. Uh, I, I would have bit your hand off for a 6-1 win at Ellen Road at the start of the evening, that's for sure. But yeah, anyway, thanks for watching this video and I'll see you next time.